Proverbs chapter 12. Whoso, anyone, loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish, animal-like. So anyone who loves knowledge and instruction won't listen to reproof. America spends millions and billions of dollars on those who don't want the reproof in schools to learn. It's a waste of money. I mean, those who want knowledge and understanding, sometimes you got to be corrected. Sometimes you're going to have to get an L. A good man obtains favor of the Lord. But a man of wicked devices, okay, what's the opposite of a good man? A wicked man. Devices. Haman had wicked devices. Will be condemned. Wicked devices can be anything of instruments of cruelty, torture, death, to get in over your fellow man. I think a lot of business people today, business owners, are going to get a lot of judgment for how they treat their employees. I think a lot of employees are going to get judged for the way they treat their employer. You know, when you devise something that's wicked, it's not for the welfare of someone else. It sure does not have God in mind. Now, when you think of wicked, you think of Satan. He was a murderer. He was a liar. He wants to worship. A man shall not be established by wickedness. Once they die, they go into hell. If they're saved, once they're judged, it's all burnt up. But the root of the righteous, again, opposite of wickedness, shall not be moved. Psalms chapter 1, where it likens you to the tree. That root goes into the, to the water and is fed and produces fruit. Even Nebuchadnezzar, as wicked he was, you know, they likened him to this tree. He said, cut it down, but leave a little root, I believe it was. I believe, honestly, as far as the Old Testament sent, on how does that exactly happen for a Gentile king? I believe he's going to be in heaven. You know, once he testifies that God is God and who he is, you don't hear anything more from him. So, and men are likened to trees in the Bible. Uh, root, family tree. A virtuous woman. And you can find her in, in Proverbs 31. A virtuous woman. 1 Corinthians 11, 7 is another note I got. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Honor, authority, pleasing. You know, Christ for his bride wore a crown of thorns. But one day will be coming with crowns. If she's a crown, you ought not speak ill of her. Yeah, she's my wife. Look, 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 all the world, look. That's my wife. But, oh, but, you know, but is an important word in Proverbs. It says good, but the bad. The bad, but the good. There's no way around getting around Proverbs, studying the book, and, and not knowing what's right and wrong. Even an Old Testament book. All right, you got a virtuous woman. What is the but? She that maketh a shame. So a virtuous woman does not make a shame. Is a rottenness. There's no rottenness in a virtuous woman. In his bones. 
A non-virtuous woman is arthritis. She's likened to arthritis. You can't do certain things once you get arthritis. It hurts. The thoughts, not the actions, the thoughts. People, please get in your heart. God is not only going to judge you for what you've done, He's going to judge you for what you thought. Get this. Know it. Your thoughts can be sin. You're sitting there thinking, oh, if I could just rob a bank, you are a thief now. Oh, I just killed my boss. You are a murderer. Oh, look at that girl. You are an adulteress. The thoughts of the righteous are right. So when you are not thinking good thoughts, you're not righteous. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Jeremiah seven twenty four. You know when you when there's people who are out there for counseling and, and they just want money. They want to get you in trouble. They're not looking for your welfare. And there are Christian counselors that are wicked out there. They have nothing to do with God and the Bible. Well, they may quote scripture, may the wrong scripture. And there are a dime a dozen today Christian counselors out there. You know, I see a Christian counselor, I go in there and say, listen, are you saved? I wonder what kind of answer you get. Okay, now that you're saved, you say you're saved, show me your fruits of your salvation. Really? Okay, now show me in the Bible. Here's a Bible. Now show me in the Bible how you got saved. Hey, listen, I'm going to sit down with anybody. They're going to counsel my life. I'm going to make sure they know what God says and where to find it. These Christian counselors, I wonder how many Bible verses they'll give you to take home and read. The words of the wicked are lies are to lie in wait for blood, murder. We saw that in chapter 1, verse 11. The words. Those people in, in Proverbs 1 didn't kill anybody yet. But they were charged for murder just by talking about it. Now you can, in, pro, in chapter 1, you can, well, let us go kill somebody and drop dead of a heart attack, and you'll stand before God as a murderer. But the mouth of the upright, upright is opposite of wicked, shall deliver them. Matthew 12, 37, and verse 34. Deliver who? The upright. When you confess unto the Lord what your sins are. Confess your sins. Confess your thoughts. Confess your word. Realize in, in Matthew 12, God, God, Jesus Christ, speaks that we're going to be judged for every idle word. And those idle words are some of our thoughts that we don't do. That we'll be guilty of. The wicked are overthrown are presently in the eyes of God all the wicked have already been condemned John chapter 3 listen you're condemned by birth you are a sinner how to get out of condemnation is turn into Jesus Christ as your Savior no turning you're condemned the wicked are overthrown and are not They'll be gone one day. They're not going to heaven. They're not going to be with Jesus Christ. They're not going to be with God. They're not going to be anybody in hell. You know, Jesus said, 
you know that that, that man. Well, what is the rich man's name? We know Lazarus' name. He went to Abraham's bosom. We know Samuel was there. Where name Abraham's got to be there. It's Abraham's bosom. What was the name of the rich man? He doesn't have one. Imagine going to a place where you never have a name anymore and you have no identity. But the house of the righteous shall stand. Matthew 7, 24 to 29. The man that built his hand, you know, obeyed the words of God is like to a man that builds a house upon a foundation, upon rocks. And when the storms come, A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, honor, but he that is a perverse heart is opposite of wisdom shall be despised. Now. James 3, 13 to 18 is a heavenly and worldly wisdom, the difference between the two. And this is not happening in America. You don't lift up and honor the wise man and you don't despise the perverse heart. It's completely opposite. The evil is good and the good is evil. He that is despised, he must have a perverse heart, and has a servant. Wow, a despised person, it, it's a wonder that he has somebody to work for him. To, and enough, see, he don't have the wisdom, verse 8. How do he get it? How do he get a servant? How do you get enough money to afford somebody? See, you despise is, you know what? You just have no credibility and you have no character. I'm not going to hire you. Oh, wait a minute. I'll make a law that I have to hire certain people according to race, sex, and creed. That's how I get over that. Now, that's just the God's honest truth. You know, if we hired people in this country the ability to work and the ability to know what they're doing, uh, there'd be a lot of people who'd be out of work tomorrow. And a lot of people who are unemployed right now will have a job. It's better than he that honors himself, self-righteous, and lacketh bread. He's poor. It's a rich man versus a poor man. And there are people, you know, they put themselves on a pedestal. You know what? They ain't got enough for bread. They ain't got enough for food. Pride and laziness. You go down to the park we've been and we've listened to some of those homeless people and all oh, they talk so big, but you know what? Where is your next meal coming from? If it wasn't coming from a church or a Christian organization or welfare. You know, if the churches would stop feeding the people physical bread and give them spiritual bread and the government would stop feeding lazy people, they would not be eating. Then what would they be boasting in honor? And you see, they all they all got their, their, their cell phones plugged in to the power outage. Where did they get the cell phones from? Guy had a nice bike. Where did he get it from? I'm 
I'm sorry, the government gives too much away to those who don't want to do something. Now listen, if you got a job and you can't make it, you got two jobs, you can't make it, I believe you should get help. But if you're not going to do nothing, I mean, listen, these people that camp down here, these homeless people, give them a couple paint, uh, uh, cans of paint and let them paint some of the things down there for, for their... Watch how long, how, watch how long, how quick they'll run from that. You give them a paint can, a paintbrush. The righteous man regards the life of his beast. Oh. You want to know how many cases I've, I, yes, I watch the People's Court. I watch Judge Judy. I mean, it's not better than anything else is on the television. At least you learn some things with you know how to protect yourself from the law and that you know how many times there are animals brought before the judge one person oh you know the life is big he doesn't keep his, his animal on, on a leash I got a neighbor next door who won't keep his door closed for his, for his dog dog runs right out in the middle of, the, of a busy road right by us you know, if you, if you regard your beast, you would make sure you got the proper protection for that beast. And then that can go for, you know, miscarriage of, of sheep, of cattle, no food, or that, taking care of them. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Now that is a mouthful. The righteous man takes care of his beast. The tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Even in the most loving state of a wicked man, he's cruel. There's another motive that they motive, motives. You know, he he may tell that that female, "Oh, I love you." But he he's got other opportunities. He's got other things he's thinking about. He may buy her flowers and and open up the door for her, and and but he he's got something else in the back of his mind. Because you can't know love if you don't know God. How is a man going to who is lost and doesn't know God going to show love, going to show mercy when he is absent from them? You know the Bible says about me as a born again Christian it says I am to love the brethren, and outside the Holy Spirit that is impossible. I'm to exercise the ability that I have the Holy Spirit and the fruits inside of me to use that fruit for the for loving the brethren. The Bible says I'm to love my wife. It says uh, the, to the women, love your children, love your husband. You've got that Holy Spirit in you. Imagine somebody who's lost who don't have the Holy Spirit. When you've got a liar and a murderer in your heart, John 8, 44. You know what I'm saying? Without the Holy Spirit, you can't do good. It's impossible. Now, we're seeing the news today. Oh, this guy gave a $1,000 tip to this waitress. This guy paid for the, for the five people in the line at the drive-thru for their meal. He's doing it to get his name in the newspaper. He's doing it to put it on the IRS line such and such deductible. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied from work, Galatians 6, 7, with bread. You know, you go out there, you prepare yourself a little, even a little plot of a garden. Well, whatever you plant, you're going you're going to enjoy that fruits and vegetables. Whatever you plant, you're going to enjoy that first one that comes up. That's yours. Enjoy it. But he that follows vain persons, the wrong crowd, is void of understanding. He's not going to. He's going to go fool around. To have entertainment, playtime. Now, as far as gardening, I got a note here: Psalms one twenty-eight, verse two. 
The wicked desireth the net of evil men. The wicked desire, he wants the net of evil man. He wants to trap the fellow wicked man, the evil man. He'll slice and dice him and shoot him and kill him and stuff him into a, a barrel and throw him in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean so he can get the top rung on the corporate ladder while somebody's going to try to kill him and stuff him. It's a doggy dog world because they've been teaching you come from evolution. You know, I guess a monkey will kill another monkey for the bananas. Adolf Hitler was cruel because he wanted to conquer the world. The Roman Catholic Church or Institute was cruel because they wanted to get a settlement in Jerusalem and rule the world. You know, a young man will, 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 will ruin a woman so he can desire and rule her? A woman will ruin her family by stepping into the net of the evil man. You know, I will rule that man. I will, I will put that man under my... No. Go ask Jezebel and Ahab. But the foot of the righteous... Yieldeth fruit. Ephesians 5 8, Galatians 5 22. The foot of the righteous yieldeth fruit. But we've been talking about gardening again. Now, what is the foot? The fruit, the root. But the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Well, we just read about a root. The man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. The root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. That's interesting. Because some roots are the fruit. Some roots produce a plant of some kind that the fruit are above the ground. You know what you are supposed to do as a righteous person in the Christ righteousness? That your righteousness is Jesus Christ? You are to produce fruit. If not, you're a dry, dead tree. You are that tree that Jesus walked up to wanting fruit and it was just leaves. That's all it was. Now, you can't lose your soul, but God will curse you at the, at the judgment seat of Christ by burning it all up. You better somehow, some way, produce some fruit. Wherefore, by their fruit, you should know them. What, what do you do when you go up to a man who says, I'm a Christian, and he has absolutely no fruit at all? I don't know. The wicked is snared, trapped by the transgression of his lips. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know, a lie will produce another lie. It's an endless lying circle. All right, but the just. So just is absent of wicked. I'm going to keep showing this so you get it. You can't be just and you can't be wicked. There's no way. Proverbs will teach you you cannot walk down the middle of the line. You either one or the other. There's no half bait. There's no middle of the road. The wicked is snared by the transgressions of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. Proverbs 
1 Corinthians 10, 33. Now, it does not say you'll avoid trouble, but you'll come out of it. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I am not going to give you a prosperity gospel here. Matter of fact, you get saved, your life may be in worse than what you were before you were saved. You know? But I'd rather be out of trouble than be snared. You know, we deal with these people and over and the answers we get out of their mouth is they don't realize that one day God's going to hold them accountable for what they say if they don't get saved. I feel sorry for the first person. I don't know who it is. God does. I feel sorry for the first person that ever said to teach men to say, well, the, the Bible is written by men. Because I don't know how many years that excuse has been going on. Or what about this excuse? Now, it has to have been as far as tracts have been written. Back to the Ethiopian eunuch, at least. I already got one. You know, you, oh, well, you know, I said that. I got off from those people over there. Ha, ha, ha. And you imagine God calling up the great white throne judgment. Okay, what did you say about the gospel? I already got one. Oh. That's a snare. Can you imagine the prideful event? Someone comes by us and say, I already got one. And the Lord taps on their heart saying, you know what? Holy Spirit is calling. You just lied to them. And you better go back and get one of those pieces of papers or from now on your life is gone. And you imagine in that guy's pride, he was, he's saying, well, if I turn around, I'm going to go admit to those people I lied to get one of those pieces of papers. Do you think that would be a snare for someone to come back and admit to somebody that I lied? That's a snare for Christians. Born again Bible believing Christians to, to swallow down that pride to be humble. I guess. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. It's doing what you're supposed to be doing. Living right will produce right and tasteful fruits. The way of the fool, now the way, notice that coming up now in the, in the book of Proverbs. There are many ways in the, in the book of Proverbs. And if you sit down and mark your Bible with the ways, you'll find a quite interesting study. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. You're not going to be able to talk to them. And if you're a soul winner, if you're out there witnessing for Jesus Christ, if you are a, a sower that plants the seed, you've seen many of these fools. And in your heart, you, you, but you just got to stop talking to them and they're going to walk away foolish. You're not going to get anywhere with them. But he that hearkens unto counsel, so a one that hearkens to counsel is opposite of a fool, is wise. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Somebody comes up to him or he goes to somebody and says, well, I, I need advice. And he listens. A fool's wrath is presently known. Makes all the newspapers in America. But a prudent, uh-oh, so if you're prudent, you are opposite of a fool. A prudent, Isaiah 118, man covereth shame. Romans 12, 19. 
Colossians 1 14 Romans 4 17 you know that covers shame means he just humbly takes care of the matter or just you know what it ain't worth taking care of I'll let it bygones be bygones I'll turn it over to the Lord in prayer see what the Lord wants me to do about it but a fool don't go, don't go marching in without studying the matter without realizing maybe he's wrong or maybe the situation was wrong maybe it was a misunderstanding let God do pray let God reveal it may be you were the one that was in trouble he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness all right so a truthful speaker is righteous okay the but a false witness deceit oh they had a lot of them at Jesus trial I wonder how many faults I wonder how much deceit is in our American courtrooms there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword but the tongue of the wise is health James 3 1 through 10 there's somebody out there who will speak with a sword <laughs> kill everybody shed blood Roman Catholic Church I love Hitler I'll kill him kill him I'll kill him the gladiators, the Christians in, in Rome, you know, the thumbs down. He didn't have to say a word, just put the thumbs down, it meant death. Nebuchadnezzar said, put those three young men in the fire, kill them. The two presidents said, put Daniel in the lion's den, kill them. You know? But the tongue of the wise is health. Eight people were saved by Noah's tongue. Your tongue can speak health of salvation. The lip of truth. It says the lip. It doesn't say lips. Why? I don't know. It says lip of truth. Shall be established forever. How long forever? Forever. Every truth you speak, uh, what is true? Thy words are true. Sanctifying through thy word, thy word is true. You know everybody you talk to about with the word of God will be established forever? It will go through the fire and come out as uh, gold, silver, precious stone. You know how I many sports talk in a church will, will be burnt up? Stupid idol talk, Matthew 12, that's spoken you know, at church. Burnt up. You know? But a lying tongue is but for a moment. James 4.14. James has great things about the mouth and the tongue. DC, DC, that's not a good word. DC, I find my note, is in the heart, not head. Jeremiah 17 9, 7 19, I think it is. The heart is deceitful above all things. The seat is in the heart of them that imagine evil. So out of the evil heart come with adulteries, murders, fornications, Jesus said. Where did that deceit come from? It came from your heart. It's been in there the whole time. But to the counselors of peace is joy. So peace is opposite of deceit. Peace is opposite of evil. So how are you going to have a church that has a deceitful heart 
Now imagine evil against people who love the Lord and then peace. Peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Oh, come on. How long have you been saying that? There shall no evil happen to the just. Now, wait a minute. From God. Now, you may get evil from Satan. You may get your own evil of what you've done in sowing and reaping. <clears throat> but if you do just, God is not going to put evil in your life. Now, why did God allow Satan to do all the evil to Job? Because Job had sin in his life. He was self-righteous. Imagine if Job was truly right in the Lord and, and Satan came and let me go at him. According to that verse right there, if Job was doing right, God would have said, no, you can't. We get evil because of the evil we do. Job was getting a little prideful there that he was offering sacrifices for his own children. Now he loved his children, he loved the Lord, but it was But the wicked shall be filled with mischief. John three thirty six, Psalms five five, Psalms seven eleven. As long as you do right, lying lips. Oh, look at all the lying. Our abomination to the Lord. That means extreme hatred. Can I say it? You want to let me say it? Please? For all those that say go vote, 99.99% .99 of your politicians are abomination to the Lord. And you're going to vote for them? I got the right one. Oh, come on. Really? You got that right one politician that's going to put the Bible back in the schools, drop abortion, and let's cap. No, 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 no. They're going to say anything to get your vote. That's a lie. And that's an abomination to God. You know, at least one thing with royalty, they didn't have to lie. You know what? When they died, their son became the next ruler of the country, or somebody would come in and, and conquer the, the nation by sword. They didn't have to lie to get into the politics. They were even born into it, or they won it by war. You know what voting has come to in America? It has come to a bunch of people who will lie and do anything and throw mud for you to go in there and say, I like you. Hate me if you will. But if you got somebody who lies, that's an abomination to the Lord, and I don't want them on my side, and I don't want to say I like them. And if you vote for that person, you are in, in cahoots with a, with a person that God hates, with extreme hatred. So do you know all those people that, that came in and said, well, Jesus said this, well, Jesus said that, Jesus did this, Jesus did that, and they couldn't even agree with each other, the Bible said. You know that? You know Jesus sitting there standing looking at them like, I extremely hate you. Talk about God hates. Jesus is standing there with a closed mouth and in his heart and in it, I extremely hate you for what you're doing right now. 
had they read Proverbs chapter 12, which there was no Proverbs chapter 12, but this section of the Proverbs, they would not have done what they wanted to do. But they that deal truly are his delight. How about that? You step up to the plate and say, yes, I did it. I broke it. I took it. It was me. It was my fault. And God looks down and says, I like that. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, you said that you gave me the credit for it. And it wasn't me. It was Mr. Jones. Oh, really? God looks down and says, I like that. You know, when you tell someone to just say this prayer and they're saved, God says that's an abomination. Oh, I got somebody in mind when I say that. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the fool, the heart of the fools proclaimeth foolishness. There are some people, they just speak their whole thing and ain't much. And a prudent man will wait to open up his mouth. He'll use his knowledge when it's time to to use his knowledge he's not always talking that's what the thing is saying he's not quick to open his mouth you'll know how and when to speak I guess but the heart of uh, the fools proclaiming foolishness by coming up and speaking just to speak, to ask questions, just to be heard. Fool are you just to be heard. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Not in America. But how about Daniel and Joseph? How about David? How about Solomon? How about the Lord Jesus Christ? But the slothful shall be under tribute. Americans are slave to their government. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. Sadness. Pain, sorrow, troubles, burdens. But a good word maketh glad. Galatians 1, 6, and 7. Matthew 11, 29, and 30. Somebody said, and you give them a good word. What is it? Someone got saved. Uh, or we got a cure. Or I'm praying for you. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. So not all neighbors are righteous. Not everybody in the world is going to heaven. But the way of the wicked seduces them. Their own religion is their, is their way. And Satan will seduce them right into the bowels of hell. A slothful man roses not that which he took in honey. It's amazing. He goes out there and he hunts, but he doesn't cook the meat. But the substance of the diligent man is precious. You know, if he goes out hunting, he, he grabs, every, I don't know much about hunting, but he grabs everything that he can off that animal, even if bones to be used for tools. Welfare will get rid of the hunter and the fisherman. Why would he need to go hunting? Why would he need to go fish if the government will give him a free card to go down to the grocery store and get whatever he needs? I wonder if some of these places that deliver food to your door will take the welfare. I'm getting so sick and tired of walking in uh, in these convenience stores and Wick approve and Wick approve. Well, come on, it's a grocery store, the most expensive place to get food, and you're going to waste it, your government money, on the most expensive food. 
At least go down to the grocery store and have the most cheapest item be put on the way. Welfare will keep you from hunting and from fishing. You won't need it. It will come to you free. And the way of righteousness is life. The Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 16. And in the pathway thereof is no doubt. John chapter 11. As we close with another chapter of Proverbs. Rights and wrongs. Left and rights. Ups and downs. Righteous and wicked. Yes or no, God or Satan, heaven or hell, full wisdom.